All right, hello guys. How's it going? This video is going to be a little bit different here. We're not even going to do an intro. We're just going to go over the tropics today. I feel like in years past, I would make videos purely dedicated to tropical disturbances. And this year, I have been doing a little bit of a different format where I'm kind of going over everything to do with the weather in the United States every single day. But I just wanted to take a step back, go back to the channel roots, and really just give you guys a big tropical update. And by the way, I've seen your comments, we are going to be making a fall forecast, the, the first frost video, the fall foliage video, all of it. Uh, it will be coming up soon, more winter forecasts as well. So I have been seeing those comments and those are on the way. Also, just want to let you guys know, let's just go over things though. And we're taking a look at first off at our two day graphical tropic weather outlook. And probably the main reason I'm making a video purely dedicated to this is because it has been so long since we've had anything to talk about in the tropics. Uh, that this just feels a little bit special. Now, we do have a 0% chance of development over the next two days, so this is going to be more of a long-term uh, disturbance that we need to watch for. Uh, you can see that that is located just offshore of Africa at this point, so that is where it's at. Uh, let's take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, though. And as you can see, there is a 40% chance now that we're taking a look at it on this instead. So uh, af basically what that means is days one through two, there's a 0% chance, but days three through five, there's a 40% chance. So days three th through five, we are watching for about a 50-50% chance of development. Uh, this one has jumped from uh, yellow to orange really quickly here. Um, usually when these explosively increase here on the probabilities, that means it is a strong uh, disturbance and it has really good roots there for development. Uh, one thing you will notice here is that this definitely has more of a northern curvature to it. Um, so this definitely is aimed a little bit north here. Uh, we, we in, in the past here this season so far, we've seen a lot of these storms get suppressed to the south. And what I mean by that is mostly going south of Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico there. So the southern Caribbean, usually when they go south of those points, in my experience, it means that the storm is likely going to dissipate. Now, that's not guaranteed. We have seen some uh, turn out to be really, really strong. And usually, those ones uh, are headed northward. So, they'll, they'll cross these islands here. I forget what they're called off the top of my head. Maybe the uh, Leeward Islands. I don't know. There's so many different island groups. I know the Bahamas, obviously, and, and our larger islands out here. but And Bermuda, obviously. But some of these, you know island areas get a little bit confusing. Now, sometimes when these storms cross over these and head northward over Puerto Rico and then into the Bahamas, we sometimes see that be a track that leads towards very, very intense storms. But the ones that stay down in this area and head just directly westward, those are the ones that usually die out in this area. And especially the further south they go, if they're touching South America, for instance, that is like a tropical storm graveyard. Now, this one, obviously, we have nothing to worry about as far as that. It looks like it's going to clear those islands to the north easily, maybe even on trajectory for Bermuda or a bit south of Bermuda if it doesn't curve north beforehand or completely fall apart. Um, so we're going to be watching for that. We'll take a look at some model guidance information in just a little bit that does suggest that's a possibility. I've seen that a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery for this one real quickly and just see what we're working with. Now here we are taking a look at this satellite imagery loop and our main area of concern here is going to be this. Uh, there obviously is some storminess here out ahead of it, but it's mainly this area in the circle that we're really concerned with. And you can see these taller clouds indicated by those blacks and whites there, uh, definitely indicating some very, very tall clouds in there. Uh, and that's just offshore of Africa. The Africa coastline is about right here. Uh, and we see that that is just offshore at this point. So once it breaks away from Africa and gets more over open water, I think we're going to see a lot more interesting things with this one. Uh, so once once it, you know, that's why I think days one through two, the development chance is going to be relatively low because it's going to be hugging the coast here. But it's going to be once it breaks away um, down here off the coast of Africa, we're going to see the best chance of development there days three through five. Now, what we're going to do is take a look here at the modeled guidance. We're going to track the vorticity and see where they have this storm heading, both the European and the American model. Now, probably in a couple of days, we will have some spaghetti model guidance for this one. Uh, at this point, there is none of that coming out yet. That will be coming soon, though, likely. 
Uh, we could see that this area of vorticity here is going to be our main area of concern here on the European model. Keep in mind that all of these colors, all it means is it's large scale rotation in the atmosphere. So the more yellows and oranges and reds and pinks we see, the larger uh, or the stronger that rotation is up there in the atmosphere. But this is the large scale rotation. For instance, you wouldn't see a tornado on this. That would be too small to show up. Uh, however, a large rotating storm, for instance, a very strong low pressure system or a tropical system would easily show up on this. That's obviously a very much, much larger scale uh, rotation. We can see already by this afternoon, we'll see it break away a little bit. This is kind of the evening time, actually. Uh, it'll break away just a bit. And even by tomorrow afternoon, we'll see it likely in this area here. Uh, and what we see on the European model here is we do see a bit of development. Look at that. So between Tuesday, where we see just some greens and some yellows, and then we're going to see here on uh, Wednesday time frame, look at this development that occurs. The reds and the, the dark, dark reds start to show up in there. That's indicating strong rotation. I would say this model is probably suggesting that we will have a tropical storm at least by this point, or a named storm with that, that scale of rotation. It's hard to say, and there is some major disagreement on the two models. We'll take a look at that in a minute and kind of compare in contrast. But at this point, this European model, which to a lot of people is the best model out there, uh, this is looking like a stronger developed storm, likely a named storm here. We can see that by the time we're taking a look at Saturday afternoon, though, it does dissipate quite a bit. We only see blues and greens, so it really gets eaten up here. We do have some interesting uh, upper air patterns here, for sure, with some stronger ridges and troughs up here. Uh, so that could be playing a factor as well, uh, but that, that could lead towards some stronger jet stream. Uh, but what we see happen here is pretty interesting. By the time we reach Monday, the, the 15th here, we start to see it develop again. And this is headed towards Bermuda for the most part. And by the time we reach the end of the model run, look at how developed it's looking again. Just so we see a low out here, um, we do see a larger trough over the eastern United States and then pretty much a pretty large ridge over most of the Atlantic here is kind of what I'm seeing. So it's going to be interesting to see what this does. I think based on this upper air pattern, I would say uh, with this in mind is some sort of curvature offshore of the United States seems most likely with this trough in place. Um it will likely ride along it, something something along those lines, not like that. I don't want to get too ahead of myself now, but uh, if this was correct, which this is 10 days out on a model run, so keep that in mind. This is very, very low confidence. Uh, however, um, with this specific frame we're taking a look at in mind, I think some sort of offshore track would be most likely, given what we're seeing right here, which would mean mainland United States would not be seeing impacts in that type of a scenario. If the trough was, let's say, you know, 300 miles further west, then we'd maybe be talking a little bit more about potentially uh, some sort of impacts with this one. But everything could be completely different. So that could be the case. Uh, this is 10 days out. So it really, really is hard to say. Now, here's the GFS model. So we're just going to compare and contrast this one. We see this one gets off to a hot start. This is already by Tuesday morning at about 5 a.m. We see there is uh, darker reds showing up here, indicating a stronger storm already. So GFS gets to a very, very hot start. And even, I mean, by the time we're taking a look at Thursday, probably has a hurricane here in the middle of our main development region there in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, now, the, the main difference here is that we really see this one break up quickly. Um, so it hits this upper air pattern. You can see our set, uh, 500 millibar geopotential height has some stronger heights up in here. Uh, maybe some higher pressure in the middle of our Atlantic here. Uh, really just eats that one up. Uh, but it, it does get off to a very hot start and become what looks to me like at least a hurricane. Although our GFS model is known for doing a little bit of some weirder things. And I'm just tracking where that disturbance goes. Um, it eventually... What we kind of see happen here is it tracks up like this, and it actually looks like it gets suppressed down here uh, and does this, but it does not develop throughout any of this. It breaks up and it just stays very, very minor, uh, low pressure for the most part. Um, but I do want to note here, we, we do get our second tropical wave here by next weekend. We get a, set, a third one after that, fourth, fifth, like we get a ton of activity all of a sudden. 
So by the time we're reaching mid to late August, we should see this conveyor belt of tropical systems heading out of our main development region there in Africa. It should really, really get going is, is what we're seeing as an indication here. Uh, and, and honestly, that's my best guess at this point as well, is that activity will pick up towards the end here of August. And with the GFS model, we get to 384 hours, which is going to give us a more longer insight for better or worse. We get longer here on the GFS model, so um, sometimes that can be a really bad thing, like when you see a you know September uh, blizzard hit Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, which I can vividly remember the GFS showing in years past. But regardless, it is right sometimes, and it does need to be taken into consideration at all times. Any model could be correct, even if it's wrong nine times out of ten. There's still that tenth time. Anyway... I've rambled on enough, guys. This is an interesting system to track, and we're going to be watching it every single day. I hope you guys will tune in. Even on our typical daily videos, we will be tracking it daily. Maybe not this in-depth, but anything that I find particularly interesting or important to share with you, I certainly will. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're still at a 4 out of 6. Maybe should be lower, but whatever. We're just going to wait until we're at a 5 out of 6 or 6 out of 6. At, or Yeah. I've never, I don't think we've ever been at a 6 out of 6. That probably won't happen. But if we get confidence in this tropical system, for instance, if, I, if we just feel like we know exactly what's going to happen, that's when this confidence will really start to rise. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our plot of patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lord the Pan, Mandy Bridgefield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donnie Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalas, the Cat Bike, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Colisi also. I'd also to thank our channel members, Cat by Steven Van and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.